Hello and welcome to Women Matters. This is the edition of August 2019. Can you believe it that we are already in August of this year and next in a few months is 2020. Incredible. Anyway, today we will talk about men and women today. How it is, what, what relationships do we have, what do we envision, what, what are the problems and out of our feminine perspective, basically. And uh, now uh, she has gone. Uh, I wanted to Sorry. introduce, <laughs> yeah, Petra. It's she is raining new. really badly here. So it's, uh, okay. Yeah, so I just had to close the door. You get the first uh, time to space to introduce yourself to everyone because we others are old, you know, so we know each other know already. Each other. Okay, so... Um, and then uh, we, we mute ourselves, please, while we are not speaking. Dorothy, I can mute you and then you unmute yourself when you uh, want to speak. Okay, up to you, Petra. Okay, so uh, yeah, my name is uh, Petra. Petra and um, I live in Hamburg. I moved here about four years ago. Um, before that, I lived abroad for 23 years, uh, first in London and then in Athens. And uh, my background is in uh, media, culture, communication, and then yoga. And now I'm studying to be a counselor, a psychotherapist here in, in Hamburg. So that's what I do in, in brief. Okay, so and check in. How how is it today? You said it's raining and you yes. have to do <laughs> um, I, In the morning I went to the um, therapy training school, which was very nice. We had a, a very good session. Um, then I went to the, the park here in Hamburg. They have a big park with a big natural lake. And I went swimming because it's about 30 two degrees here at the moment there's a thunderstorm going on just now and it's pouring down which is uh, really welcome but tomorrow and the day after it's supposed to get really hot again so I'm looking forward to more swims mm -hmm. um, and I ate a whole tub of ice cream to cool down today and uh, so I'm really looking forward to meeting you now Thank you. And I uh, come bring my check in next because we had a big thunderstorm. And when I had a, a meeting on Sunday and I was sitting there already with my cell phone as a hotspot because no electricity and with a laptop and at a certain moment it made bang and the, the cover of the plugs sprang off. And later I saw that there was the pole of the telephone line was half and the telephone line itself was broken. So it was quite, quite something. But unfortunately, apart from the router, nothing has happened. I have to have a new router and then we can go on as, as usual. And today it's quite good. It's still warm. It's, but I like it because the thought of winter coming soon, mm, I don't like it so much. Dorothy, you are muted. Let me unmute you. Huh? Okay, Thank go you. ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Heidi. Welcome, Petra. It's nice to meet uh, another person. And um, I'm here in Oregon on the coast, and we've had a phenomenal string of sunny, sunny, beautiful days. Our gardens are going crazy. And um, the ocean is bright blue and clear, and it's not as hot here because we have the cool um, breeze uh, that comes off the cold sea. Fortunately, the sea is still somewhat cold. And um, I'm a therapist too. I, I was a clinical social worker for, well, I guess I still am. I do a small practice in my home, not much. But my big love is my grandchildren, Kate, who's five, and L, who's six, three, and they spent the uh, weekend with us. So we're full of love and spirit and magic. 
and I just celebrated my 77th birthday in August. I celebrate pretty much all of August. Um, <laughs> and a wonderful uh, unfolding is that seven and seven equal 14. And I recently was at a, um, a, what is, a woman who has powers. I don't know what you call it. She, she channels. And she noticed my 14 year old outside my body. So I am in the process of incorporating uh, some 14 year old energy that got left behind. And I'm very excited about that. That's all. <laughs> so congratulations for your 77th birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, I am Monia and I live in Vienna and we still have hot spells here above 32 degrees and but it gets nice and cool in the evening. So far the weather report. I'm, a trans I'm trained as a translator and I still do some translating and right now I am very involved with creating an evening for uh, our Venice Integrale Salon. Uh, and it is about uh, two books uh, written by a fictive person, Hansi Freinacht. And the book is called The Listening Society. And it's actually, it's written by a psychologist and a philosopher. Um, and they claim that they transcend Wilbur, but actually they really very much rely on him and on the map of integral consciousness. So I'm very, but this comes out only in the second book after 500 pages. And um, they criticize uh, integralists for not being political enough or not having influence on society. So this is the topic that I have to admit uh, I'm rather into the philosophy and not into social changes. But uh, it's quite interesting and I would recommend it to you, at least the, the first one. The second one is called Nordic Ideology because they claim that Sweden and the Danes uh, are the most advanced in social, so in regard to politics and sociology. Um, yeah, so this is what really interests me right now. And I would like to be able to talk to you about this book maybe sometime because it's really 900 pages and that's a lot of reading but it's quite uh, stimulating so that's my introduction for today thank you for listening <laughs> and thank you and maybe when you have prepared your your talk for the salon you can share it with us and then we make an extra appointment to talk about it that would be that would be great yeah so today's topic men and women where are we today we forgot someone i was gertrude she has oh. not introduced oh. herself oh. Oh, she i didn't see her oh i have to, oh. to change the, the view okay <laughs> the only one in blue <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i'm gertrude from north of frankfurt in germany and um I'm a coach, consultant, trainer, and at the moment I'm um, somebody who is uh, planning with others uh, the first appreciative inquiry European gathering or event conference in Germany. So they had 22 without us <laughs> and now now we are planning it in Frankfurt. And that is really something to plan for 50 to 100 people. And 
today I got a call. We can go to the Uko hosts in, in Perth. And our um, purpose is partnerships for st sustainable development. How do we ignite effective connections building on the strength of every stakeholder? So, and I just have 10 days uh, being grandmother. My daughter came with her too. They are two and four. Oh! He just turned two. <laughs> and I don't see them often because they live in Austria. And uh, this was quite something because during the day being grandmother and in the evening when they were in bed until mid after night to support my daughter in, in passing her online exams and so mm. so I was quite lately mm. and uh, to go to the topic I had an encounter with uh, a colleague which was really interesting mm -hmm. at that dy dynamic this uh, I see uh, Diana has joined and maybe afterwards you can talk about uh, what you have experienced. Yeah, I just wanted to mm -hmm. <laughs> say that this topic is really, for me, it's relevant. At mm -hmm. the moment. Okay. Hello, Diana. Welcome. And we are just doing the check-in uh, round and maybe you tell us where you are and who you are and so on. And then we go into the topic. Can you speak? Can she hear us? Can you hear us, Diana? Obviously she can't hear us. Mm. Mm. Can you hear? No. Oh, she's gonna <laughs> turn it on. Okay. So let's let's start. I mute her and so. Oh, she doesn't even have a microphone. That's it. <laughs> okay. Gertraud, tell us what, what's your, on your... Go ahead, Gertraud. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's men or woman thing, but I think. It, it is, it's like when I get scared, I, I get a, I withdraw. And when at least many men, they step one step further. So like uh, taking the space. And what was really interesting to, what is leadership? That was the topic where I had this, this um, this feeling, it's not, I, I mean, it's not the, um, it's not personal, I want to overpower you and things like that, but, but it feels like that. It feels as if this, this, um, Yeah, they, they, and maybe it's, it's also a developmental thing. I don't know, but it feels like uh, in this case, the male thing is there's only one boss and there's only one who know, who knows where to go and who initiates the things and the others uh, need to come along. And for me, I, I more have this, um, I was in Sarajevo with, to visit the, the Bosna source, the well. And this is a, this is a whole area. It, it's where so many sources come together and then there's a pond and then there's a, uh, a creek going there and, and a waterfall and then it meanders through 
steps through an area and then it comes together for a big stream, the Bosna that gives name to the whole country. And, and yeah, it's so, so different. It's so, yeah, it, it's really hard to, to say. And I had to go through a lot of triggering things. So I said 80% of my triggers, trigger points, he knows. <laughs> so, so that's another personal thing. Um, and my, my meditation teachers told me that uh, in Sanskrit, and I don't know, I, I don't know Sanskrit, but they say there is focus is the male part is hunt the deer and the female focus is mother nursing her baby. And at the moment, it's really, there is something that doesn't go together. And I don't know if it's a level thing or a male female thing. Uh, and that was really hard the last time. So in the last weeks. So that's what I'm dealing with. And I think there is a male female part in it too. So yeah. Just to it make you angry? All kinds of emotions. So it's sad, angry, uh, trying to understand. Um, yeah, but it took a while to get mad. <laughs> um, sorry, Gertrude, I, I, I haven't understood properly, uh, I think. Um, I, I'm not sure if I quite understood, just to, to um, ask a question. Um, it's about a, a man in your life, and what's your relationship with this man? They're yeah, colleagues. He's a colleague, okay. Yeah. He's, he's got nothing to do with your meditation teacher? No. No, okay. Mm. So it's your, his behavior that's upsetting you? There is a mixture. It's upsetting, uh, but it's also like, do I want the leadership type that he thinks is the right one? <laughs> okay, and you're working with him on this uh, on the organization of of this meeting that you are talking about in the no, beginning. No, no, we are working together for many years now uh, in the consultant business. Okay. Which, so what, what kind of consultancy are you doing? Um, our topic is appreciation. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's okay. So it has to do with this method that you're saying in the beginning that, that about this conference that you're organizing. Also, yes, that it was one part of it, but okay. uh, I think it's more, how, how is leadership? Mm. How, what is leadership? And, and may I, maybe I can say, we elect our leader yearly, annually. And so when I was elected the th third time, he was mad or he said that doesn't work for him. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> so for me, the question is, what is feminine leadership, the characteristics of feminine leadership, and what is the characteristics of masculine leadership? Yeah. So well, shall we talk about that today? Try to figure out what feminine leadership is as, as in contrary to masculine leadership? What, what, well, what would you need, uh, Gertrude, in this case, uh, Dorothy? Well, I had a, I had an, a different um, question for you, Gertrude. Is it Gertrude or Gertrude? Gertrude. 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 I'm at a stage where whenever triggers come up and a lot of energy uh, is is uh, coming, you know, I'm responding to a lot of energy. I always look at, and this may sound simplistic, and I don't want to simplify the complexity of what you're dealing with. I always look for what am I trying to learn 
by being in this kind of a situation with this kind of a person. You know, it's more about me and um, an opportunity to kind of find my strength or find my position or uh, recognize my triggers and, and, and work with my own triggers. Like this 14 year old part of me was a subpersonality who created a lot of trouble for me. She, you know, she wasn't integrated. She didn't get support from me. So she just turned into a tyrant all the time. And I couldn't really, now that I look at it and with the knowledge and the work I've done in it, it really had nothing to do with the other people. It had to do with her learning to stand her ground in a, in a balanced and um, um, open-hearted and strong way. So I don't know if talking about men and women leadership is the way to go. It might be. I don't, I don't deal with that at all in my life now. But I know that whatever comes to me is for me. And it's my work to unravel it and own my pieces. But then, as Moni said, you know, she's, she's more theoretical and studying in her way. I'm almost 100% psychological and you know and and so I embrace uh, at this stage especially because I don't know how much time I have left to do all that that you know all that I really want to do so that's what I just want to say that I would be interested in supporting where you are with all this mm -hmm. rather than understanding this man but that's just me over <laughs> here in Oregon. I'm not in Germany or Vienna. Yeah. Um, I don't know if, how can I say that? Um, I, I, I didn't tell that uh, because I'm overwhelmed and need help. <laughs> I told it to, to say I'm just, I'm just in the midst of, or maybe over the <laughs> hill, uh, in dealing with this, where one part of it is this male-female thing. But there are so many layers, and, and Dorothy, what you said, I completely agree. So I, I, um, I looked at all the triggers. <laughs> so I said, okay, what is it that makes me mad, what makes me sad, what, you know, and then I could trace it. Okay, that comes from my sister, that comes from my mother, my father, from, you know, so I, I could trace that. And then I was looking for um, gifts in it. What, what is it that could be a gift that I learned or I can learn? And then what is my next developmental step? And and the triggers, actually, <laughs> I really had 99 triggers that I could name. I mean, beyond there, a lot of more. And, and all pushed by him. So I thought, well, he is a very, very good um, foil for me to, to, to have. No, foil, is that the right word? Somebody who, who gives me the opportunity to grow. So, so that psychological part, it's not over, but, but I'm very much dealing with that. And, and, and now I'm more about distinguishing what is my personal part and also what is it that I want to teach others? What is leadership? And is there a female and male leadership or is it a level thing, <laughs> which I suspect as well? Um, and yeah, to what is my responsibility? To what we give out to the world? Um, yeah, and what is my personal responsibility? So that's why I came in and said I just have that male female thing, but it has so many layers that I don't I don't want to to narrow it only to that mm -hmm. but it's part 
I do Dominic. actually think that there is a difference between female and male leadership, or let's say feminine ways of leading and masculine ways of leading. And I, you, you said, Gertrude, that he was not agreeing, but when you were leading. So I was wondering if you could say how your style is. So maybe we could find out <coughs> what's, what's the difference. I personally find that the masculine leadership is often very normative, very um, like um, severe father sort of uh, things are done like sort of order even if they are packed in nice words but they are going f ahead forward and pushing while uh, in my opinion feminine leadership is more giving the space and let arise what uh, comes up and then order let's say the sequence of importance uh, of what comes up that's out of my head now spoken. What do you think, Gertraud? And then we ask the others. For me, it's about holding space and generating. So in connection. Is she frozen? Or is she thinking? <laughs> I think she's frozen. Maybe the... I want to initiate. Oh, we get out. You, you were frozen. Can you say it again? Sorry. The whole time? Almost, yeah. In connection, we heard, and then it okay. was frozen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to... Um, yeah, for me, it's holding space for the purpose. So without purpose, it's, I don't know what to lead exactly. So I'm not going for, for goals. They can be part of something, but not, it's, it's about purpose why i'm why are we here why we are together and holding that space and then in connection with others um initiating things so like um yeah thinking about the strategy or really how how can that purpose be fulfilled that that is one for me a, a big thing but it doesn't have anything to do that i want to be called the, the big leader or that I want to uh, power, I want power over people or anything like that, like that. I want to have the power to, to fulfill on what I'm here for. So connecting with that power, but it doesn't have anything to do with power over anybody. And do you think the male uh, masculine leadership is trying to have power over? I'm not sure where that comes from. If that is more the ego thing or is it more the male thing? So I, I'm, I cannot distinguish it in this case. It's power over. It, I think that's not the, and he would never agree with what I'm saying right now uh, or what I said, but it's about, I think it's about dominance. It's about <laughs> like this, you know. And not even consciously. Uh, again, I, in my theory, of course, I'm very theoretical right now. Uh, so it's a question of value means on which level you are cooperating. 
Because there is always a kind of dominance at a certain value meme. But once you get to integral, uh, it should be different. Um, I'm uh, thinking about a co-creative work we did a couple of days ago. Um, and if you trust the other person, the man or the woman, uh, and if you, you said you have been working with this man for a long time, for many years, for decades. No? Oh, mm -hmm. I thought I heard that. Uh, because if everyone relies on the lines he or she has developed and the talents he or she has and respects this in other people and even makes good use of it. Um, this is also for me leadership, whether female or male, it doesn't really matter. But uh, we were sitting there at the lobby of the hotel. I just came back from my vacation, so I'm very relaxed. And we were sitting in the lobby of the hotel and he was typing and I was dictating. And uh, that was quite natural because my creative uh, metaphors sometimes just turn up and he appreciates that. And so what I'm driving at is that co-creating may be the kind of leadership that is really required right now. And every other kind of leadership of dominating someone is outdated. And not quite in theory, also, also in the praxis of what you do. So please read up your, your Wilbur. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> it helps sort out what's happening. At least for me, it does. Okay. So feminine, female leadership, which is dominating, is not good either. We were only talking more or less about the tendencies that uh, men are more easily uh, going ahead, while Gertrude said at the beginning that she is drawing back when things uh, appear which are not. Uh, and I think this is, I, I would say it's commonly, I don't know if it's feminine, but many women still do. But there are some who are like like men, no? So we, we say, yeah, we women have learned to become better men <laughs> after after the uh, women's liberation. I wonder, Peter, what you have to say. You you saw male leadership in the places where you were, and you saw female leadership. Did you notice a, a difference? And was it good or not so good? And what was the difference? Um, well, I was just listening and thinking what my experience actually is of male and or female leadership. Um, it's often said that the male leadership is like hierarchical, but I think it's more, my past is more about situations. It's like there are some situations where it's not, um, there needs to be somebody who's the leader in order for the team to be able to, to work and move ahead. Like, um, like for example, we're, we're playing a game today in class and um, the, the task was that we all put our chairs in the middle and we put them on tilt and we held them with one hand. And um, the instruction was to move ahead one chair at a time, the whole group together. And it was left up to us how we'd organize that as a whole group. And if it, one chair would fall, then we'd have to start again from the beginning. So there we were, and we all had to work together as a group and trying to figure out how to do this. And you know, some people said, let's just move ahead. And then there's chairs falling because you only had one hand, so you could only hold one chair at a time. So, quickly we figured out that somebody somebody said okay i'll count to three and then we all move ahead and then 
And then three people started counting to three, so that didn't work. <laughs> and so it turned out it needed one person to actually call the shots and say, we're going to do this now. And um, so is that, is, that, uh, is that hierarchical? It's some kind of hierarchy, but it's also that one person just needs to do this, you know, call the shots and, and have that role. And it's also a responsibility. Um, so that made me think, okay, well, in some situations, it's just not possible any other way. It's, well, like in, in groups like this one, there needs to be facilitators. Is that a hierarchy? Isn't that already a hierarchy or? And, well, um, hierarchy isn't anything bad. It's a competence hierarchy mm -hmm. in my, as I perceive it. Someone is competent to call the shots, as you said, mm -hmm. and then it works. And uh, if we can t count up to three, but that's a different, it was just a joke. Yeah. So you don't see a difference between uh, male leadership and female leadership? Well, the only thing I could possibly see is that um, women, perhaps, uh, if they're in that role of, of, of power, that they're less egotistical that it's more that they it's more about trying to do the best in the situation but again it, it cannot be generalized i mean there's some women for whom that doesn't apply at all um so is it that the men well also there's you know in patriarchy that we have this classical uh, type of, of man who looks after his, his family and, and looks after all his employees and uh, is, is kind of a father figure. So he's also selfless in a way. It's not about his own personal gain, but it's about his whole family or his whole tribe. Or Is it that women are less, less selfish or is it, is it like that? Is that what, what is part of the female? Leadership style, no? Well, in the organization where I was, um, at the top there was a man and he put a lot of women in powerful positions, but they also uh, followed that structure. It was also a hierarchy, so they equally set up structures where they were at the top, like as, just as a man would be. So it wasn't cir circular or it wasn't uh, that everybody had to, this, you know, that people were working together and, and having equal say and, and decision making. So I don't know. What do you think? At that point, I would welcome uh, Diana. It's the first time she is here and she has made it. Now I unmute you and uh, give you the space to say something, present yourself or introduce yourself. And uh, then what do you want to say about men and women and maybe leadership? Okay. <laughs> Let's see well, if we can hear um, you. Good. I'm in Portland, Oregon, and I figured out how to log into the Zoom thing. So now I've I'll be there. <laughs> and I, I agree with some of the stuff you said. Um, but I have worked in several different big companies, Wells Fargo, um, different, a, a huge janitorial company. And I don't want to say they're pretty equal, but some women are very selfish and some men are very selfish. And when they're in a position of power, sometimes they'll do things that will make them look good and not, and sometimes by hiring all women, um, you know, in, in powerful positions or vice versa. Sometimes they don't, sometimes they're doing it because they're trying to get these people out there and known and push them to actually be more autonomous and take over a position where some of them are very insecure and they won't. So there's different sides to it. And I've, I've seen a lot of it. I don't have a lot of experience, but from what I've seen, 
there's there's so many different types of, of men and women that that in a position of power may do a really good thing but some of them may not and sometimes it's hard to to see it but when you're sitting in the background and observing sometimes you can see the whole stage and you can see the players and how they're interacting i don't know if that's my background from sociology and psychology but i'm, I'm a real good people watcher now and i and i I watch them like I used to play with my Barbie and Ken's, you know, just to see how people interact and what they do. What in our, um, my cousin and I run the Next Generations group, which is a, a group that started out with just second generation of Holocaust survivors, but we've expanded it to include people who have been affected by any kind of genocide or Holocaust that have a story they want to tell. And her and I work really well together. And, and sometimes you'll get a team like that where one person is knowledgeable about one area and the other person is knowledge about the other area. And it, it makes a good mesh. And we also are uh, interchangeable because when she goes on vacation, I try to pick up the computer stuff like she does. Not as well, but I can hold my own until she gets back. And she's a public speaker. so she takes over my position really well. So I, I kind of see what you're saying as well with the, and then when you mentioned the, the man who takes care of his family and the work and all that, I'm always wondering if, if they would, if they're doing it for a reason or if that's something that they feel they need to fill that role because somebody in their family, um, did it and, and they liked it that way or if that was they were trained because i see my brother and he he's almost exactly like my dad in his so his social awareness of people around him and the way he runs his business and i see his attitude toward his family and it's almost a lot like my father did so is it something that he learned or is it something that's in his personality you know what I mean? Petra, I was listening to what you were saying and then it got me thinking about that too. Anyway, that, that was my perspective. I'm glad I got in here. Hi, Dorothy. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. So uh, you I still, uh, there is still Petra's question looming about hierarchies. Oh, okay. If I remember correctly. And for me, the best example is that the Integral, Integrale Forum has been trying to avoid hierarchies of any kind. And usually they get stuck somewhere. So a competence hierarchy is just maybe the thing really to help us to tolerate hierarchies because our, our green meme just has a horror of hierarchies because of dominance, but on the other hand, uh, more competence in a certain field can help you as well. But they, we have been trying, that's an organization, an integral organization, and we have been trying to have the people from the top represented with, and the people from the bottom. And there has been such a change of people all the time because they just couldn't couldn't work together. I don't know why, and I always avoided being involved there. But this may be a really really interesting question, uh, and it's it doesn't matter if men or women. It's just that they really left and left, and and they didn't they haven't been able to have a dialogue or discuss it. They just said, okay, I can't do it. And to be able to talk to each other, maybe one important aspect of leadership. Do, do you feel that, that maybe some people don't want to be up there? They would rather be like the ant workers? Exactly, no, not, not ant workers, but well, uh, my that, grandson. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, my grandson, he is now 22, and uh, he is with the military also of, uh, d during summer, but he doesn't want to be on the top. He prefers to be second. Okay. And uh, yeah, 
and maybe if there is a war he won't find it anyway he is a very easygoing person but he, we asked him don't you want to be the leader of your troop no no that's okay i do i'm the second one so not every man wants to be no. dominant no that's true they would rather be the second and and uh, be there when they need to be they like right. to back up the leaders right. yeah we have that in our in our volunteer groups too for when we're doing committee things mm -hmm. there's always the, the people that say i will help out and i'll do what you need me to do but i don't want to be in charge mm -hmm. yeah exactly exactly okay petra does that answer your question about hierarchies <laughs> I think there's another layer to that hierarchy thing. Um, I think there's also this, um, like, uh, the dr being drawn to do that. For example, my international drive, nobody else in my Oops, she's frozen again. Her international drive and nobody else in her wants to go international. Mm, she will come back, hopefully. Yeah, but I do think it has to do with the personal thing. But I, I noticed that often uh, women don't, don't I... want to, to... Oh, here she is back. You were away again. Uh, Sorry, I think you, uh, we heard you into the international drive. Yeah, we have uh, 32 degrees here. So I <laughs> want to lift up the computer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it could be. Um, yeah, I, I think it's also like my call, you could say my calling or so. So you take the initiative and do that. And and enroll others to come along not in in things like ordering or having the power but it's it's like you have the most energy to do that and to fulfill in that and so the others naturally say okay what what can i do how can i support you and and for that conference just to so we are um we had two people that says, yes, we do that in Germany. And then a third came along and, and it naturally, these are the three that, yeah. <laughs> so all the others from around the uh, Europe, men who did uh, do that work for 30 years or so, they, they just, how can we support you? How, what do you need? What is it that we can contribute? And, and I really feel like I'm part of that wonderful group of maybe 10 people. And at the same time, it, if I think they would take over if, if I dropped it completely and said, I'm completely out and somebody has to take over. But if I take out completely my, my energy and still would be there, there is nobody else that would say, okay, come on, you know? So I think this has nothing to do with hierarchy. It's more like leading by energy and purpose. <laughs> and, and one important part is to enroll others that they feel part of the story of, the, of what's going on. So at the end, everybody is appreciated and not just the leader. So. Get that out what you, what you are saying, is, excuse me, I want to add something. It's a, a good example where women can naturally step into leadership. I saw it with my mother who was uh, over 60 and her husband had died and her husband was as my father was a politician and she never would go out into public life never you know and then 
they built a, a, a street, so a part of a park right nearby her, her house where also a lake is. And she got so excited about that. And she founded a, a citizens group against that. And she went into local politics and she would never have done it without such a passionate uh, need to do something. And she found other people to, 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 to follow her for, for quite a long time. So, yeah, maybe that's the, a good uh, explanation. The motor is the passion which we need to get out uh, to, to, to do something instead of doing just something and lead other people. I don't know, just my idea. Uh, Diana, you wanted to say something? Well, I was going to say that that leads into another discussion because um, what you were saying about if you stepped out of the group with your your enthusiasm and all, it may die, and that's that's the problem. A lot of uh, volunteer organizations are having the problem because the thirty and forty year olds aren't stepping into the group as we're getting older, and we're finding that with our annual golf committee. Like I was saying, that's like, yeah, yeah, we'll help out on the day, but we're not, we're really busy during the year and we, you know, we can't come to the meetings once a month. And there, the enthusiasm and the drive that we had to start the group, and we had a committee of like 20 people, and the hierarchy of the people are now getting older, and one of them starting to get dementia. So we've taken over his jobs, but having the people come in and help take over and keep that enthusiasm it would probably be another subject but with the hierarchy again we're getting older it's starting to come out and your enthusiasm leaves the group then what happens who takes over another day another subject <laughs> Dorothy you are muted I am unmute you Okay, I'm, I'm leaving that to you. I don't know how to do it. Um, the thing I keep thinking about, there's two women that are running uh, together kind of a, um, a global crisis um, political group, and they're planning a youth walkout, a big youth conference, a big thing. And they each have very different ways of looking at it and they're fighting it's like a horrible thing because the cause is so important and their passion is important but what i keep seeing is that they they have unrelenting egos and they're not aware of the dynamics of having an ego that has too big of an investment and not enough ears or like gertrude said you know uh holding space for the purpose you know the main goal is not to hold the space the main goal is to have it my way and know it should be called this and it's it's um you know i feel like i'd like to invite both of them into a session where we define and look at what a healthy ego how it functions and how one that's out of control functions because they could very well destroy the purpose uh, that that is is shared by a lot of people. So I, I think it's it's living the unexamined life in terms of some of those aspects of who we are and what we might need to be aware of and pay attention to in order to not have those sabotage the purpose. And neat, and they're young. They're in their forties, maybe, and uh, they they just seem to have a a part that's very an ego part that's very destructive to their purpose, and that's that's heartbreaking to watch because they're not coming to me and saying, "Oh, Dorothy, could you help us get our egos in control?" They have no idea about that power. So those aren't men; those are women. So I think developmentally, it depends on. And I think what the integral work is about, I don't, you know, I haven't really studied it, is that developmentally, they're not at a stage where they have insight to that and where they can manage that energy as well as their purpose energy. 
So any, any ego out of control, any unexamined ego, any man or woman uh, is very, a very destructive force. I mean, I'm not telling you anything new, but that <laughs> seems like a pretty important uh, aspect to consider when we're scratching our heads and saying, well, what about the hierarchy and what about this? For me, that's more interesting is, you know, the cause versus the ego power. I have no answers because I don't participate in those things anymore. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm just a grandmother <laughs> and I'm so glad. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, Gertrude, did you say about the passionate need to do something or was it, I don't know who that was, but uh, of course this takes me back again and again to Eros. So the passion uh, we have for something and uh, passion is energy and uh, how we contribute our energy Maybe there is a difference in men and women, I don't know, but it's not that much different, I guess, as long as you're willing to contribute your energy to something. That's my final statement for today. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> We have uh, done almost an hour, so we 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 can sort of wrap up and and see what what came out for us. For me, it was a little bit. Uh, we are trying to find our way through this jungle of men, women development stages, and also temperaments and energies and and so on. I, I don't think we have uh, found a. A clear way yet but it's good to to brainstorm all these things you know so yeah thank you anyway that you are here and brainstorm with me i'm glad i figured out how to come on <laughs> yeah that's great I'm, my, that's... I'm leaving my tuesdays open okay good fine very welcome do you want to do a check out uh, uh, or, or get hold first? For me, I think when you study, for example, Ken Wilbur, you have that like eros agape, so you have it very clear and so, but in real life, it's, it's a lot more messy um, and, and has so many layers and so many distinctions. Um, so when I came in, I kn knew it's not just this male female thing, uh, but I couldn't do it better. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and, and I think that what Diana said uh, that um, so sometimes men and women are very much alike in their egoistic way of doing things. So it, it, it's not that clear. So, so I'm, for me, it's, yeah, that's how it is. So we, uh, it doesn't follow the, the philosophical structure. Life is a little bit more, more messy. Life is more messy, Dorothy, you said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think the complexities and, you know, I've never found a system, one system that can grasp the enormity of the, of what is it called, Pris prismatic nature of human beings that you think someone's just a, a, a lovely, easygoing person and then they get in a situation and all of a sudden you see kind of the monster, the subpersonality come out. I don't know. It seems like Bill just completed a workshop called Bright New Futures, and they had a schematic way of putting things on paper so that you could kind of separate out like all the things we've generated. Like you said, it's like huge men, women, ego, purpose, all of that. And maybe I'll ask him uh, if, if he can show me how that works and we might want to and I'll send that a note to all of you about it 
um, use that to kind of schematically organize it because keeping it in our heads is like really, uh, for me, I just sat here and thought, well, I'm glad the rest of you have ideas because I'm just sort of like <laughs> whirling in it. So I'll, I'll, I'll do that and I'll send that. And I will also send a picture of my grandchildren. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I have to. Yes, please do. Thank you so much. Mm. Petra, it's good that you're with us. And Diana, it's wonderful to have you. And mm. my three friends, my, that's, this is good. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. I'm just wondering, because one of the topics that turned up again and again was about our inner work, our shadow work, uh, Gestalt, aber, and this is also uh, one of the main threads in the listening society of Hansi Freinacht, the society of the future, that you really know yourself and you are aware what is going on in somebody else and what, as Gertrude said, so you, maybe from the outside you see it more easily than you do it, than the other person. Uh, so shadow work, you can't get around it unless, and even if a 14 year old turns up, then <laughs> it's, it's just great, yeah. <laughs> Some more final statements. Uh, yes. Uh, well, I, I'd agree. I think there's a lot of work that's already been done on male and female leaderships, and you know, that could be researched. It's research to be done, and you know, it's, I think a lot has, has already been said. It's very useful. I don't think we have to reinvent the wheel. On, on that and and I agree with, with Monia that the shadow work is really important and also the working with the um, the inner voices or the inner, the, you know the many faces or it's, it seems to be a trend in all the main psychological traditions now they all seem to have clocked onto that and that's where, where really the, the progress is or where the what the essential work is or not even only the, the, the parts, but the, the central position of that entity, which is aware of all of them and which makes the decision that's actually uh, the most important. And that's where it's, it's interesting for me because with my yoga background, um, that's what, what yoga is all about. It's, it's becoming aware and developing this identification with the, with the witness rather than with the modifications of the mind, as they call it in the yoga sutras. So that's also where my where I see the junction between yoga and psychology. And I have another question, Gertrude. You said something about your meditation teacher. You said something about women and and babies. Uh, I, I don't quite remember what it was, but now it just came back into my mind, and it just seems like I, it just it generally just feels wrong to me reducing women to their role and looking after babies because there's so much more to our lives than, than caring for children, isn't it? So I think it's a role that we can take, but... No, 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 that's not the point. No, I mean, what was it? I don't quite remember. Like when, when we use the word focus, then we think of the this hunt the deer thing. So we have to focus <laughs> on something. And um, he said that this is one part of focus. And the other part is like a mother nursing her baby. It's not about that role, but this inclusiveness and, and including another human being, being connected, uh, being in this, yeah, holding space, uh, 
creating safe environment and all mm. that. You know, so that focus, we own in German, we only use, or in English, we only use that concentration. Focus is for the again. Okay, so it's got nothing to do with, with men and women or male and female energy. No, I think it was and only uh, a metaphor. Mm. Mm. Okay. The focus and concentration. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Gertraud, you were stuck like this. <laughs> <laughs> with the focus. <laughs> but I think we got the point. So at this point, everybody has said the last word or is there some more last word? I'm wondering about nurturing. If we could, could continue it on this because men can also nurture and uh, a woman and a child that's yeah that's the biological nurturing but you can nurture in many ways so not leadership but nurturing why not if okay. it's just an idea mm -hmm. next next time nurturing mm -hmm. okay wonderful okay. so great um, thank you very much and we meet in normally it's the third uh, Tuesday in the month. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Keep okay. that in mind. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. See you Thank later. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.